still not able to be here, but we do thank God for the opportunity to have electronics and to broadcast live on uh, the internet. Praise the Lord. I thank God for those that are here today. I hope you had a great week. We got our pastor and pastor's uh, wife back again. Pastor Mrs. White, assistant pastor is back. And uh, Deacon Hall's out. They uh, were in California. Safely got back, and so they're quarantining for this week, and I uh, look forward to seeing them next week. Amen. And uh, also, thank you very much for your prayers uh, for Brother Fred. Uh, Leslie, the surgery went well. He's at home recovering, and so we're uh, definitely thankful that you chimed in and prayed along with us. And continue to pray for Diana Smith as well as she's still trying to make sure everything is well with her before she actually uh, comes back and ventures in. Uh, continue to pray as we travel uh, throughout uh, the summer months. Yep. The wife will be doing some traveling in July. Uh, my sister Olivia was here this week. We had a good time spending with her as well. <laughs> I got a chance to get out and about and do some things here locally. And uh, she is about to head back to Atlanta uh, on Tuesday. And we do praise God for the time that we had to spend with her. Uh, we're going to sing our song of the month, The Lord is Good. And uh, you join in with me as we have words uh, behind us here. The Lord is good. Uh, tell it wherever you go. And uh, he is so good. Amen. Tell it others they know. Amen. So we'll sing that as uh, folks uh, chime, uh, continue to file in here in the next several minutes. Amen. The Lord is good. salvation. I pray it will be the day of their salvation. They'll trust Christ 
as Savior. We thank you. We love you. And your hands upon us now, guide and direct. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. All right. I mentioned seven weeks ago. What is next Sunday? Father's Day. Fourth of July. Father's Day is quickly approaching. Yes, amen. Right. So make sure if uh, you have a father or a father figure in your life, you make sure that you let them know how much you appreciate yeah. them and love them, care for them. Uh, I am sure my children have spoiled me. Make sure I do no chores for the day. I watch all the cartoons that I want to watch, and I know they're not going to bother me at all. Right, children? Yeah. They're shaking their heads. No, no, no. Yes, they will. My, my wife will make sure that they do the right thing. Amen. Uh, so I'm looking forward to Father's Day. It's always a good treat for me. Amen. And a good time to watch my cartoons. Amen. Uh, my sister was just, we got a chance to watch some Three Stooges with her. Amen. She's, I love the Three Stooges like we do. Amen. And uh, what a blessing uh, to have my younger sister. I call her my baby sister. She mentioned to me, uh, you still see me at the baby sister? No way. Yeah, yeah, I really do. Amen. Because uh, I left her for college when she was 10. And uh, then I left, got married when she was 13 and went away to the military. So it seems like time just stood still yeah. with her. Uh, but I praise God for my baby sister. She is a blessing and a jewel. And uh, looking forward to having her come back out again. Amen. All right. T-shirts should be available next Sunday. Lord willing. And so uh, be ready for that. We'll uh, get those all sorted out uh, once we get the opportunity and have those ready for you next week. And so I'm looking forward to that. And that ought to be a blessing. Amen. All right. We're going to sing another song here. 416. My faith has found a resting place. And I trust your faith has found a resting place. And that place is in God Almighty and His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the solid rock. And He is uh, the resting place. My faith has found a resting place.
Uh, it's enough that uh, Jesus died and he died for me. That's what we call personal salvation. Hey, Amen. Did he die for the whole world? Yes, he yeah. did. But you know what I'm concerned about most? He died for me. Amen. That's right. That's right. Uh, making it personal. And I'm so glad that God loves uh, the entire world. Yes. Amen. That it is only begotten Son. Then he reasons uh, why our faith should find a resting place, but Jesus Christ died for us. Amen. Uh, well, we're going to be right back in Psalm 145 again today Amen. and uh, get a one more of the Lord is praises. And so as uh, Mrs. Dawson and uh, Faith come to sing for us this morning, uh, you get your Bible ready and we'll be in Psalm 145, David's Psalm of Praise. 145, a David Psalm of Praise. Mrs. Dawson and Faith are going to come. Bless us with the song.
is still on the throne. He has never been dethroned, although some think he might be nowhere close to the throne. Amen. Uh, he is still on the throne. Amen. One day he's coming, and he's coming soon. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mr. Dawson. Thank you, Faith. And I appreciate that special worthy is the Lamb. Well, take Bibles and uh, turn them to Psalm 145 and stand with me if you're able. Uh, the reading of God's Word, we'll read uh, just a couple of verses here that we're talking about. Psalm 145, give you uh, an update as to the background, what we've covered so far, then cover probably verse number 17, really 10 through 17 today. And just tackle another one. The Lord is uh, designations today. If you see on my left and my right, the Lord is my on the right. The Lord is on the left. And we have already looked at a few of these already. And I'm so glad that the Lord is good. We look at the Lord is nigh. And we've already seen the Lord is righteous. And uh, we'll see a couple more today. Amen. So if you got your Bible, Psalm 145. Uh, let's read uh, verse 8, 9, and then we'll read uh, 17 and 18. Here we go. Lord, uh, uh, verse number 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. And come down to verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Father, the next few moments, bless your word, Lord, and help me to preach your word this morning. I pray that the, the ears of the listeners will be open and they'll be free of distractions and concerns. Uh, put away from them the cares of yesterday, the cares of the morning, and even the cares of a Monday. But Lord, help them now to give a first place to the Word of God, to adhere to it, to listen to it, to be blessed by it. And Lord, that their lives may be changed because of it. Uh, I pray that uh, when we get done today, we'll leave here differently than when we came in before the Word of God, whether we're here in person whether we're online, Lord, we'll be attentive to the Word of God. And Lord, do the things that the Holy Spirit touches our hearts to do. Lord, we thank you for this privilege to preach your Word. And then, Lord, for more privilege to assemble together as brethren, Lord. We're assembling in person. We're assembling online. The Word is going out. And, Lord, may each listener be blessed by what they hear today. We'll thank you and praise you what you're going to do. Save the lost, Lord. Encourage the saved. And may all things glorify Jesus Christ. And we'll pray in his name. Amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. Well, as we mentioned before, this uh, psalm uh, is entitled David's Psalm of Praise, and it is one of the uh, only psalms that is so designated. Most psalms say the Psalm of David or something like that. This one says David's Psalm of Praise, and uh, there should be every opportunity available to us to give praise to God. Amen. There's not a day that goes by you can't praise God for something. You know, you take a breath, you take a walk, you take a step, if you see, if you drink, whatever the, drink water, baby. Uh, whatever the case may be, uh, if you have functionality, if you have life, if you have breath, if you have being, you can praise God for what he has given you. David personally, at the end of the Psalms here, there's only five, four more left after this, goes up to Psalm 50, uh, 150. David is saying, these are some things that I want to personally praise God for, amen? And I mentioned before, if you had your song of praise, what would be in it, amen? Uh, I know my family would be in it, amen? Uh, my honey would be in it. My children would be in it. My mom and dad would be in it. My baby sister would be in it. My older sister would be in it. Many things would be in that, and many people would be in that song of praise, amen? Yeah. What would be in your song of praise? Maybe your job, maybe your finances, maybe your grandbabies, amen? I don't know, but I know this. It should be jam-packed, yes. amen? Yes. Uh, a, a song of praise should be jam-packed. 
David gives here 21 verses of things that he is just uh, praising the Lord about. Let's get uh, caught up to the background right here. Uh, first of all, we saw that the delight of the psalmist in verses 1 and 2. In verse number 1, David said he will be forever praising. And then verse number 2, he said, I'm going to start every day praising. Then we saw the deeds of the Savior in verse number 3 and how God is... David had one word. He is unsearchable. His works are unsearchable. Then we saw the declarations of the sons there in verse number 4, how one generation should praise the works to another. Then we saw that in verses 5, 6, and 7, the declarations of the saints. David said in verse number 5, I will speak. And in verse number 6, David said, men shall speak. And then in verse 7, he says, hey, the works shall abundantly speak. The works and the acts of God are going to abundantly speak. By the way, you look outside, and no one can make dirt. That's right, Pastor. That's right. Amen. Nobody That's right. can make dirt. Amen. Right. No one can make a rock. God makes the rocks. No one can make a sun. God makes the sun. No one can make a cloud. God makes those things. So what you see, God has made. Amen. What is that? That's just talking about how great and how abundantly gracious that God is. Uh, the declarations of the saints. Then we came down to the description of the sovereign in verse number 8. The description of the sovereign. This is one of our Lord is verses. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. By the way, aren't you glad that the Lord is gracious? Amen. Amen. Uh, what does that mean? Gracious means showing divine courtesy, kind, and pleasant. Think about it if God was not gracious, kind, or pleasant to us. That's right, Pastor. Yeah, we need somebody just grumpy for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. They're not kind. They're very unpleasant. They're unkind. Uh, the Bible says that God is gracious. He shows divine courtesy, kind, and pleasant. You know, God in his uh, courtesy will never violate your will. That's right. He won't. He's not going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. Right. Amen. Amen. But he will empower you to do his will. Amen. Yeah. But he's not going to force you to do anything that you don't want to do. So what you do, you still have a free choice. Hey, may I add, did not the angels have free choice? Mm -hmm. Did not Lucifer have free choice? Amen. Yeah. And he chose to rebel and notice the consequences. Amen. Yep. Mm. That's bad, amen. The Lord is gracious, but then, and the Lord is full of compassion there in verse 8, which means he's loaded with mercy. Then the Lord is slow to anger. Aren't you glad God is slow amen. to anger? Amen. Uh, the Lord is slow to anger. Then also the Lord is of great mercy. Amen. Praise God for his mercy. Amen. Then in verse 9, we saw more description of the sovereign. The Lord is good and uh, meaning excellent, pleasant, precious, sweet, or beautiful. And we saw that last week. Amen. And by the way, the Lord is good, and those what it says, and his tender mercy are good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Doesn't it kind of baffle you that the Lord is good to all? Don't you and I in our own thinking think that some people don't deserve God's goodness? Aren't you glad you're not God? Because there'll be some people that wouldn't get some goodness from you, amen. Somebody say amen. You know it's true. There'll be some people that wouldn't get goodness from you, but God is good to all, it says, and his tender mercies over all his works. And because God is good to all, all get that grace, all get that mercy. He's slow to anger with them. And David here says, in my song of praise, I thank God that he's gracious, he's full of compassion, He's full of anger, he's of great, great mercy, and he's good, and he's good to all, amen. And then we come to verse number 10, where we left off that last week. And David here, it's almost like David is summarizing how good God is in these next verses from 10 to 16. How good he is, and what he's good at. By the way, you know what God's good at? Everything. Everything, Pastor. Everything. Yes, sir. God is good at everything. There's not one thing that God is not good at, amen. Now, I'm good at many things. Yes, sir. No, let me change. I'm good at some things, amen. <laughs> I'm good at some things, amen. Uh, G2 is good at playing the piano. But Mrs. Dawson is good at playing the piano, amen. Oh, she's shaking her head. No, amen. Uh, she's good at singing, amen. Faith is good at helping. She helps, amen. Joshua's just a 
National Board Observer. He's like, I'm going to check it out before I get a mile. He's checking it out. Like that. He's a good reader. He loves reading. He, oh, he thinks deep. That's good. I mean, he thinks that's deep. deep. He, he thinks like this. I'm going to build a city. And who thinks like that? Building a city. Uh, yeah, now, he said plan and I'm scared. Yeah, yeah. But building a city, yeah, yeah. architecture, things that go on with that. Wow. I'm saying that you and I are good at some things. Sometimes we're good at many things. But God is good at everything. It seems like David, in these next several verses, begins to summarize some of the things that God is good at. And over these next verses, David looks to the future kingdom that all saints and all ages are looking forward to. And he lets us know that what we see here on the earth is just a taste of what will be in the coming kingdom. And I, what am I talking about? Notice he says, thy works shall praise thee in verse 10. He said, all thy works shall praise thee. All means all. Say, so preacher, but wait a minute, what about the cripple? What about the maim? What about the deaf? What about the blind? They praise God as well because they can still function in this world with a handicap that they have. Amen. Amen. They may have to have assistance or something like that, but they still are used to praise right. God for who he is and what he's done. Amen. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. Then he says, the works shall speak, verse 11. He said, now there, they shall speak of the glory of thy, what's that word? Kingdom, and talk of thy what? Power, amen. He said, what is here, what we see, is just talking about God's glory, his power, his kingdom. Now, we don't, we don't get a chance to see the kingdom just yet. That's why we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So we don't have that yet. He says, you know what? Of thy work shall praise thee, the work shall speak. By the way, Psalm 19, 1 says what? The heavens Heaven. declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory. When you hear thunder, can we make thunder? No, we can't. Lightning, can we make an earthquake? Can we make a volcano? We can make it erupt, maybe by charging and throwing some matter, amen. Uh, can we make the sun shine? We cannot. The heavens declare the glory of God. So uh, David says, uh, the works shall speak there in verse 11. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. And then he says, uh, the works shall make known the, the kingdom, verses 12 and 13. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. He says, everything that we see is just a, a show of what God has in store for you and I. His glorious majesty and of his kingdom. And then I like the, this next verse, verse uh, 13. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. How long is everlasting? Forever. 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 That's what you have when you trust Christ. Everlasting life. Amen. The kingdom is everlasting. So when you and I graduate to glory, leave this body, leave this earth, guess what? We go to an everlasting kingdom. Amen. Hey, our jobs can come to a stop. Uh, uh, many things about our finances can come to a stop. Our insurance can come to a stop. Uh, many things can come to a stop. But this kingdom that David is describing, he says, everything is pointing to this is everlasting. He says, thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endure throughout all generations. And I especially love verse 14. He says, thy works shall make known thy kindness and our falling. Notice verse 14. The Lord upholdeth. How many? All that what? Fall. Fall. And raises up, how many? Fall. All those that be bowed down. I like that. Amen. The works are shown in God's kindness in our falling. Does he have to pick us up? No. No. Nope. You ever kept a kid and the kid gets a temper tantrum oh. and they fall down and you want to help them up and they don't want to get up? I know some of y'all said, yeah, we're just leaving there, right? Uh, what do you normally have to do when that child has different tantrum? They fall down, they don't want to get up on their own. Pick them up. Pick them up. And what do you have to do? Normally hold them up. And then you discipline them up. And correct them and say, that's not acceptable. You know what they do again? Fall down again. You know what you have to do again? Pick them up. Now, they get to be G2's age and Joshua's age and Faith's age. Uh, you stop picking them up. 
Amen. Amen. You just come up there, man, and then get up. Amen. Uh, you come up through the snake, get up. Amen. <laughs> hey, what did you say down here? The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raises up all those that be bound down. Aren't you glad that we have a God like that? That when you can't get up, and sometimes when you don't even want to get up, God will pick you up when you fall. And sometimes we just don't have the in us. We don't have the mind. We don't have the resources. We don't have the wherewithal to get up. Sometimes we just don't want to get up. We'd rather stay down. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Play possum. Amen. Uh, but the Lord of all that that fall. Amen. So uh, David says down there, that work show, uh, make known thy kindness in our falling. Uh, but then again, he says down there, thy work shall make known thy kindness in our feeding. Notice verses 15 and 16. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat. I think about it. Give them their meat in new season. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he was. Gave his only begotten son. It's enough that he gave us his only begotten son, that he gave us eternal life. But now he's going to give us our food, too. Yeah. I was watching um, uh, weather gone viral last night with my wife. And they had this one area where the winds took over and uh, a fire that was started by two arsonists swept through an entire town in a matter of moments because of the wind. Mm. And you know that the people there lost their homes, they lost their cars, they lost their food, they lost everything that they had in their home. Can you imagine going through something like that? Wow. They lost everything. But my Bible says down here, and the eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season when the time is right. Don't you know those same people that were displaced from their homes could go other places and get some food? Mm -hmm. They could go down the road to the next community or the next town and get some food. Hey, folks, uh, the Bible says, and give us this day our what? Daily bread. Daily bread. We get too big for our prayers. We have too many choices sometimes. We have so much food that we think, Lord, I've got too much food. Okay, we can easily take it away from you. <laughs> And you know what we say? Lord, give me this day my daily bread, amen. We live in the land of plenty. David is saying here, hey, we could be in a situation where we are dependent upon God. And so I want to talk about let's be dependent upon God. He said, uh, the eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Wrap your head around that. Everything that is alive is fed by God. Yes, sir. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Every living thing is fed of God. We were going up to uh, pick up my, my sister up to send them peak up their eight mile. Yeah. And uh, there was a deer over on the side eating. You know who's feeding him? God. God. On that same uh, uh, viral, um, weather gone viral, they had uh, this uh, cobra. It was a drought, and the cobra had come into town looking for water. And you know, people had a water bottle giving the cobra water. <laughs> now that's great. I wouldn't do that. They were they had the water bottle up to his mouth, and he's sipping water out of the bottle. And I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's not that that cobra's gonna be a dead cobra. Uh, he's gonna have no water because I'm not doing that. But what happened? He came looking. God supplied somebody to give him thirst, and guess what? They did. And I guess he, he slithered on out of town, amen. I don't know. He lived yeah. to slither another day, amen. What am I saying here? He says, everything, every living thing is satisfied by God. If you can't say praise God for that, you can't say praise God, amen. I know how disgusting mosquitoes are, but guess what? They live off of you and other animals. I know how disgusting flies are, but they live off of your garbage. Mm. Yes, sir. I swat them when they come to my house, so they don't let me get out, amen. Yeah. If I don't get them, Joshua will. If Joshua doesn't, G2 will. G2 doesn't, Faith will, amen. But guess what? They come looking for food, and according to verse number uh, 15, uh, or verse 16, thou openest thy hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. Amen. And so David, as he's going down here, he's talking about how everybody is dependent on God and he feeds them. How God upholds all and he picks them up. Then he finally gets to another designation of the Lord is. 
And he says in verse 17, after describing all about the kingdom that's coming, and what we see is just a, a picture of what will be. The Lord is what in verse 17? Righteous in how many ways? All his ways. Notice how David is encompassing these alls. He upholds all. He feeds all. He's down here. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in how many works? All his words. And over the next few minutes, I just want to talk about those two thoughts. The Lord is righteous. And we're going to look at two areas here. The Lord is righteous in ways we know, but also in ways we don't know. Then we're going to talk about the Lord is holy in all his works, works we know, and works we don't know. Do you know that? You don't know everything that God does. Do you know that God's doing some things outside of this building right now? Mm -hmm. And he's doing some things with people that you know. Yep. And we have no clue what he's doing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And he's also doing some things right here amongst us. Mm -hmm. And those people out there don't know what he's doing in here. Unless they're looking online. Amazing. And guess what? The people online don't know what you're doing. They just know what I'm doing. Yep. Now we pan the camera around. They see what you're doing. But then that would distract them, so we're not going to do that. So the Lord is righteous in all his ways. Righteous in ways we know and righteous in ways we don't know. Everything God does is righteous. Would you agree? Yes, sir. Everything. Everything. Why? Because he's good at everything. <clears throat> everything the Lord does is righteous. And when we talk about our Lord is righteous in ways we know, just think about that, that everything that he does is righteous. Righteous in all of his ways. And there are certain ways of God that we know are righteous. Amen. I know what Pharaoh said. Turn in Exodus chapter 9 verse 27. Hold your finger there. Exodus chapter 9 verse 27. Many of you probably remember this area. What Pharaoh said to let uh, to the request that Moses gave him to let the people go. Exodus 9 and verse 27. And also it says, And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron, and said unto them, I have sinned this time. Oh, just this time, huh? <laughs> the Lord is what? Righteous. righteous, and I and my people are what? Wicked. Now, Pharaoh, a wicked person who thinks that he is a God, comes out of his lips that the Lord is righteous. Yeah. Amazing. That he would say the Lord is righteous or he is right in all of his doings. Pharaoh said, I and my people are wicked. When you and I are unrighteous, we know God is still righteous in his ways. By the way, the Ten Commandments in our conscience tell us what is right and what is not right. So do our laws. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. That we have changed our laws to make right wrong and wrong right. So in other words, our conscience already told us what was right. The word of God already told us what was right. And so we just changed our laws to make our laws become right in our own eyes. Do you know what you can't change? You can't change the word of God. Yeah. You can say it's okay. You can say it's right. Because what? God still has the final word. God still says it's wrong. Why? Because he is righteous in all of his ways. So certain ways that you and I are grown accustomed to say it's wrong, and God said so. Now we have changed the laws to make it right, but it is not right, never has been, never will be. I don't care what the government says. I don't care what the law says. I don't care how many presidents and congressmen say it is right. Amen. It's still wrong. Amen. Amen. Paul said, well, I can do this because it's lawful. You may never do this. You can't get past the rights of God. Uh, because he is righteous in all of his ways. Amen. The Ten Commandments are there. Our conscience is there. You can change the laws and you're still stuck with your conscience and the Ten Commandments. And they will still tell you that it's wrong. That's right. Amen. The Lord is righteous in ways we know. Just look at the commandments and the law. Then on the con uh, on the counter side, our Lord is righteous in ways we know not. Let me talk to you for a minute. What about when we experience misfortunes? Oh yeah. Mistreatments or misuse is not our fault. 
And we know the Lord allowed it. Is the Lord still righteous? Yes, it is, Pastor. It is. Still righteous. Remember Job? Mm -hmm. Was the Lord righteous in his dealings with Job? Yep. Yeah, yes, he was. He was. Yes, he was. Job was used as an object lesson to teach Satan that not everybody has a price. Not everybody can be bought. Mm -hmm. There will be some people that can lose it all and still trust God. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm so glad he tried Job and not me. Amen. Maybe you say the same thing. Amen. But the mistreatment of the misuse and misfortunes of Job was not Job's fault. And the Lord was still righteous. He's righteous in ways we know not. Job still didn't know to the end when he got everything back. He still didn't know that it was a test. Right. He still didn't know. God didn't tell him. And you know that God didn't have to tell you what he's doing. That's right, Pastor. Praise the Lord for that. Our parents reserve the right to not have to tell children what they're doing. Amen. Amen. Amen, Pastor. You don't have to tell them. <clears throat> what does a child do? They can get hardy and yep. get to fit and get a poochie lip. <laughs> it's not going to change things. That's right, Pastor. Other biblical characters going to Joseph. Joseph was stripped of his coat of many colors, thrown in a pit. Yep. Mistreatment, misfortune, misuse, and guess what? Was God still righteous in what he did? Yes. yes, he was. What was the goal? To get Joseph into Egypt to take uh, a, uh, 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 Jacob's family uh, down into Egypt uh, to show his might against Pharaoh, bring them out of Egypt into Canaan land, and to save off a famine that was going on in Canaan land. Mm -hmm. All to the glory of God. Was God still righteous? Yes, he was. Yes. Uh, uh, Joseph said it this way, hey, uh, don't be mad at yourself. Don't be angry. You meant it for evil. God meant it for good. 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 So sometimes the, uh, the misfortunes and the mistreatments and the misuses that you and I think of as unrighteous are righteous because the Lord is righteous in how many of his ways? All his ways. And the sooner we get that through our minds, the more uh, at, at peace we can be about our situation about what people are doing to us, about what people have said to us, about what was taken from us, about what we don't have. Because he's righteous in all his ways. Amen. Others come to mind like Hosea. Hosea had to marry a harlot. And guess what happened? She did what harlots do. She was unfaithful. Yep. That's right, and after she sold herself on the slave market of sin, Hosea had to go back and take her and bring her back in and marry her again. And all that was to show Israel and their unfaithfulness to God. Mm. Hosea was a picture of God, and Gomer was a picture of uh, Israel. And God was going to take Israel back, even though they were guilty of spiritual adultery. Well, there you go, Pastor. Ways we know not. Wow. We went about to Uriah the Hittite, who was one of David's mighty men. David even pinned out that he was one of his mighty men. But yet still, David went to him and stole his wife, committed adultery with her, and had him killed. Mistreatment, misuse, misfortune. Is God still righteous? Yes. Yes, he is. Yes, yes. The child that was born to David and that she was named Solomon, who was the wisest man that ever lived beside the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He built the temple of God. You and I look at that with Lord. I, uh -huh. I wouldn't do that in our God. Think about your own life. What mistreatment has happened to you? Oh, what misuse has happened to you? What misfortunes have happened? You know, God is still righteous. That does not stop him from being righteous, although bad things happen in your life. And bad things happen in my life. Mm -hmm. Think of Samson, the bad choices Samson made. And you think, Lord, why did you punish him sooner? Mm -hmm. Look at wicked King Ahab. God, why did you punish Ahab? Why did you give him time after time? Mm -hmm. Think about Barabbas. Barabbas was let go. So that Jesus could be crucified. Mm -hmm. That's right. Did Barabbas even appreciate being let go? Or did he go back to his old ways? The Bible doesn't say. That's right, it doesn't. But to fulfill the purpose of God and the righteousness of God, Barabbas had to be free so that Jesus could be crucified for you and I. Yes, sir. What am I saying? The Lord is still righteous in ways that we know not. Why does God do what he does? Or why does he allow what he allows? Why do people seem to get away with stuff? And I would add, and what Pastor Ben used to always say, there's no such thing as a successful sinner. Oh, that's good, Pastor. That's good. You may think you did away with it. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Pastor. Because the Lord is righteous, he's got to deal with sin. Did he not deal with Pharaoh? Yes, yes he, he did. did. Yes, yes. 
Uh, did not deal with Israel? Yes, it did. Uh, God is going to deal with sin. God is still writing the ways we know not. Listen to these verses here. Psalm 11 and verse 7 says, For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. Psalm 33 and verse 5, He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Psalm 71, 19, the righteousness also of God is very high. Who has done great things? O oh God, who is like unto thee? Psalm 119 and verse 142 says it this way, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. You know what that means? It never stops. Amen. It never stops. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So we know our Lord is righteous in ways we know, and we know he's righteous in ways we know not. The New Testament puts it this way, Romans 11, 33. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. You know, the same word uh, is in verse number three, unsearchable, meaning past finding out, amen. Uh, Romans 11, 33 says, how unsearchable are his judgments. We can't figure God out. One thing we know, we have to conclude that he is righteous in ways we know, and his righteous in ways we know not, even when there's mistreatment, misfortunes, and misuse there. Let's go down the second half of that verse down there as well. God is still righteous in ways we know, in ways we know not, but also the rest of the verse says, the Lord is uh, holy in all of his works. Or, our Lord is holy in what we know. Psalm 33 and verse 4 says this, the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. When God works in your life, is it for your good or for your hurt? It's for your good. For your good. You know God's not out to injure you or to hurt you uh, unnecessarily in a way that's going to make you unprofitable. Amen. Whatever he does is going to make you profitable. And so he is here holy in all of his works. What he is doing is to produce more holiness in you and produce more holiness in me. It is designed, the works of his holiness are designed to make you and I more holy. What do you say? As I am holy, be ye what? Be ye also holy. Be ye also holy. For the Lord is holy, be ye holy. Our those works are holy and beneficial to us and done Amen. in truth. And truly what he does... We need, and that's the truth. Amen. Again, going back to children. Do kids always understand what works the parents are doing? No. Tell the kid to brush their teeth. You know what they say? Why? Why? Why should I brush them? You say, so you don't get cavities. Why? Why? <laughs> yeah. Cavities cause decay. Why? Why? <laughs> then they'll fall out. So what does that mean? You show a picture of somebody, their teeth fell out and they're all black. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. Why does it get false teeth? That's a Joshua answer. Why does it get false teeth? Here. Yeah, you really don't want to go down that road. So what happens? When it comes to the parent, the parent only has works that they do that they don't tell the child. And so God here is holy in works we know. Just like kids don't always understand the works of those do for them. Sometimes we don't understand the works our Lord does for us. Think about it. Do you really understand all that God does for you? No. No, you don't. When you break down, do you know that God is doing that for you? When things go out, we were talking about the uh, other day when our heat went out in the oh, summer. Oh. <laughs> and I didn't really think about God doing that for my holiness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just thought it was going to dip into my pocketbook. Yeah. That's right. But God oh, is holy in all his works. Yes, and he's righteous in all his ways. And if I'd have thought that way, that would have been a lot easier for me and all of me. Yes, sir. <laughs> We had 100 degree weather one day, and my wife had a flat, and so I took the boys with me to change the tire. Oh, my. And they didn't see that, that as a holy work. They saw it as a hot work. Hot work. <laughs> and they said, Why are you bringing a tire with 106 degrees to change the tire? I said, Because I want you to learn how to change the tire. I said, Don't your mother change the tire on this degree weather? And like oh, typical boys, yeah. Evil. There you go. I said, no. I said, Mommy and David are not getting out in 160 degree weather to change the time when I got two young teenage boys that can do the job. I said, what's this to give you experience for when you break down? Amen, Pastor. The Joshua answers will culture break. 
<laughs> and that was important. We don't have to do this. We only have to learn. I know how to learn. I've learned how to bow to like that, you know. So I guess this is Joshua. Um, can you come in case somebody's like, oh, sure, Joshua, you're right over. Okay, stop. I said, ah, we're going to make a connection. Now, the Lord, the Lord turns tired. Holy in all these works. Yes, sir. Our Lord is holy in works, we know, but then, lastly, our Lord is holy in works, we know not. Yes. This is the part that normally hits us. Yes, sir. Works we know not of. Uh, we may not understand all of God's works, but the Bible says he's holy in all his works. Does it say all in your Bible? Yes, sir. The Lord is righteous in how many ways? All his ways? Holy in how many works? All his words. Let me show you a good illustration of this. 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter number 6. And I've been here before. 2 Kings chapter number 6. And in 2 Kings chapter number 6, you're going to find the man of God being surrounded by the enemy. And it's only him and his servant. 2 Kings chapter 6. And uh, let's come down here to verse number 17. This is Eli, Elisha. Elijah is off the scene now. It's Elisha. Yeah. And uh, Syria there is after uh, the men of God. And the Syrians have them surrounded. And uh, pick it up with me up here in verse number 13. And uh, he said, go and spy where he is. This is speaking of Elisha, the king of Israel. Or the, king, the king is saying, go and spy, see where he's at. He said, go and spy and see where he is, and that I may send and fetch him. And it was told to him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and encompassed the sea about. When the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and notice this, and a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, Master, how shall we do? In other words, he said, what are we going to do? The enemy's all around us. You ever felt that way before? What are we going to do? The situation seems hopeless. Yes, sir, Verse 16. Then he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are, how many? More. More than they that be with them. So in other words, he, he said, don't no, no worry, sir. We got more than us. Mm -hmm. And the servant looks around. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then he looks at Elisha. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think this is going to work. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there before? You've got more bills than you have money? Or do you have more miles to feed than you have resources? Yep. Or you can have more that's needed than what you actually possess. You say, I don't know how this is going to happen. That's what the story says. Verse 16, he answers, Fear not for they that be with us, more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, do what? Open his eyes that he may what? See. And Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, notice this, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of what? Fire, Fire round about Elisha. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying here, God is still holy and works we don't know. The servant could not see. Oftentimes, you and I can't see what God is doing, but God is still working a holy work around you and think that you don't know of. Remember last little foundation? Yeah. I didn't know about that. Guess yeah. what? It happened. Yeah. Remember we're trying to get into the storefront down there and need like 25000 for an architect? And in the bathroom, I was discouraged and just like, man, Lord, we don't have this. And ran right into the man who could stamp and he said, what's your problem, son? Amen. And it was the guy I had been inviting the church over and over again. And I said, we need the stamp of approval on this and we can't move in. They talked about we need $25,000 oh. in an architect. He looked at my plans. He says, my office. He marched right into his office and told me to follow him. He stamped my plans. And I looked. Guess what? And I thought, what in the world just happened? Yeah. Seven, God, you seven, know what? Four more works I didn't know. <laughs> he had me in the right place at the right time with the right person who could sign the right document and get us 
to occupy the building. What am I saying? God is holy in all his works. So as we says in verse 18, and uh, when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. So the servant got his eyes open. These guys got their eyes closed. Amen. What I'm saying? God is holy in all his works. Ask the question, have you been blinded to God's holy works? Yeah. When you thought there was no way. Maybe you got a way in front of you right now. And you think there's no way. God is holy in all his works. Works we don't know. And works we don't know. You know, you're thinking there's no way that God can work this. There's no way that I can see this working uh, for God's holiness. Or my, there's no way I can see this. God is still holy and works we don't know. Up to the last minute, when the chariots are all around them, the servants are the last master. How should we do? He said, Lord, that's more for us than it is for them. He said, Lord, open his eyes. Maybe they got God needs to open their eyes. Amen. That you can see that he is holy and always works. Works we don't know. Works we don't know. Maybe he's got to open your eyes that you may see that all of his ways, ways you know, ways you don't know. Your eyes need to be open to that. To see what God can do. He is still the God of the impossible. <clears throat> he is still the God that parted the Red Sea. He is still the God that provided man in the wilderness for 40 years. He is still the God that smote uh, Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea. He is still the God who created the flood. He is still the God who sustains. He is still the God that saves. His power has not diminished. And whatever is going on in your life, the Lord is still Righteous in all his ways. He is still holy in all his works. Back to Psalm 145, 17 as we close. 145, 17. How many times has God's holy works been done in our lives and we did not know it? We will never know all God's works for all his ways until we get to heaven. Amen. And God will show us and say right here, right here, right here. And I believe our mouths would drop. <laughs> yes, it would. And he said, I was working this holy work. Nah. I had this holy way and you didn't have a clue. That's right. How many times has God's righteous way stepped in and freed you? Ways you knew, ways you didn't know. That's good. How many times has holy work stepped in and freed you in ways you didn't know? Ways you knew. Well, it's happened to me time and time and time again. Yep. But you know what? Every time one of those holy Works are done. The righteous ways are done. Ways I know, ways I don't know. I seem to forget when the next trial comes. I seem to forget when the, the next lack of funds come. I seem to forget when the next trial of health comes. I, I, I tend to forget when the next need is there. That God was always there in the past. And if you're like me, you might need to say, God, I don't know deserve it. Can you show it to me again? Can you show it to me again? He upholded all that fall. Uh -huh. He feeds every living thing. Yep. Now, if he can pick you up when you fall, if he can feed you, and his ways are righteous always, and his works are holy always, uh -huh. don't you know that maybe today or tomorrow? Or this week you might be tested in that area. Oh yes, Pastor. Oh yes. And God's going to have to show you something that you don't know. Mm -hmm. He may have to reiterate something that you already know. He may have to show you a work that you had no clue he was going to show you. And you fretted all last week. But he knew. <laughs> because when we came down to the last little foundation, my wife can tell you, I fretted. Yep. I fretted. And I'm a pastor. Amen. I said, Lord, we don't get this money. We're going to lose about $10,000. Whoa. I said, so what are you going to do? And it seemed like I got crickets. <laughs> and I, again and again and again, and we got closer and closer to the day. And I said, what are we going to do? Uh -huh. You know, and part of me said, has he ever let you down before? And then that part said, no, but we haven't been here before. Yeah, that's right, Pastor. That's this right. is different. <laughs> we need money. Yes, sir. And we've never needed this much money before. And my, my sister, my baby sister, she was just here. She had needed the surgery a while back. 
And God laid it on the doctor's heart to give her the surgery. It's expensive surgery. Whoa. To give her the surgery for free. Wow. For free. Wow. She went into the surgery. Amazing. You know, kind of nervous. I'm going to pay for this and this, that, and the other. The doctor said it's not going to even charge. Oh, that's nice. For the surgery. Ah. Righteous in all his Word. ways. Ways. And holy in all his ways. Works. My sister praising God for that to this day. Praise the Lord. I'm still praising God for the last 25 days. What is the next thing that God's going to have to show you? David is going out here showing you. This is why this is David's song of praise. He said, I got a lot to praise God about. I got a lot. And I just trust that you have a lot to praise God about as well. One of the greatest works that Jesus Christ has done, that's the cross. When you hear the name about Jesus Christ, the cross was that greatest work. It was holy work. It was a righteous work. But it was a work so that you and I could attain the righteousness of God. And that's in Christ Jesus. Why? We're sinners like they are. Mm -hmm. I and my people are sinners. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is righteous. Amen. And you and I need the righteousness of the cross of Christ. And whether you're listening online or whether you're here right now, if you don't have that righteousness, you need to step out by faith and trust Jesus Christ's death, his burial, and his resurrection for you. And just like Pharaoh, you said, I have sinned, say it sincerely, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. What work will God have to show you this week that's holy? What way will he have to show you this week? That's right. righteous in all his ways, holy in all his works. Father, thank you so much for David's song of praise. Lord, thank you that you are righteous in all your ways that we know. But Lord, still, you're righteous in ways we don't know. We don't know all of the ways that you have, but we know they're righteous. We don't understand all of the works, but we know they're holy. And sometimes when we don't understand, we help us to step into the role of a parent and how the parent deals with the child and understand that the parent always wants what's best for the child. And sometimes that child doesn't understand. Lord, whatever you unfold to us this week, whatever it is that we need this week, you may have to uphold us when we fall. You may have to feed us with our daily bread. Lord, you may have to show us your righteous ways. You may have to show us your holy works. And we don't know it. Open our eyes that we may see and help us to praise you when it's there. And Lord, we know we'll fret, but when we do, Reassure us again with your love because you're gracious, because you're good, and because you're righteous. Bless now this invitation. Perhaps someone needs to call on Christ to be saved. Uh, perhaps someone needs to draw closer to you in ways that you are doing in their life that they don't understand. In works that they don't understand. They don't see how it's going to work. And so Lord, I pray that you would work in our lives today, showing us what our need is. And that man, woman, boy, or girl needs to be saved. Help them to call on Jesus Christ, ask forgiveness of sin, and believe on Jesus Christ. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our heads are bowed, and our eyes are closed. That's very good place in him of invitation. You contemplate in your mind and your heart what you need to do when it comes to God. Maybe you're here and you say, Lord, I need to see some righteous ways. I know of many. But there's some ways that I know not of. There is someone that has some misfortune going on. There is someone that has some misuse going on. There is someone that has some mistreatment going on, Lord. I know you're righteous in ways that I know, but Lord, those ways that I don't know. Help me to see those Job experiences, those Joseph experiences. Those Hosea or Uriah experiences, help me to see those. Perhaps you say, Lord, I know you're righteous in all your ways. Show me some of those ways that I don't know. And open my eyes to what I can't see. Show me what I need to do. Show to the servants that there were more for them than against them. Maybe in your own life right now, there may seem to be many against you. It seems like it's only you and a few. Maybe God needs to show you that there's more than just you and a few. You and God is majority. 
man said he showed me those holy works and they don't help maybe you might say Lord I, I know about the works know about ways but I just need a little bit more confidence a little bit more courage in the word you know it's all by faith we're saved by faith and day by day it's by faith by grace and faith are you saved so God may have to step out Joseph had to Job had to the other men and women of faith had to we had to say the preacher in this situation you know, I know it is but God's an old God and he's still a powerful God he's still a good God he's still a righteous God he's still a gracious God and he wants to be gracious to you so whatever it is that you need he's righteous in all his ways more than all his works he'll save you he'll keep you he'll hold you when you fall he'll feed you when you're hungry meet you need. Father, thank you so much for being God who loves us. Lord, thank you that David's song of praise can be the praise that we can embrace for our own. We see your righteousness in ways that we know ways we don't know. We see your holy works. Works we know. Works we don't know. But God, we know it's for our holiness to make us more holy. You said, be ye holy for I am holy. So Lord, we don't understand, we don't comprehend, we don't trust you by faith. And help us know that you have never been late. You're at all time God and you're always in the right place at the right time for us. And God, we're so grateful that you can be with us here and with everyone wherever they're at. So Lord, we're going to argue that one that needs to be saved today, help them to firmly step out by faith and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and confess their sins and be born again. Lord, as Christians, help us to face these unknown days and hours and weeks with confidence that you're righteous in all your ways, and holy in all your works, and you'll meet the need. Uphold us when we fall, Lord, feed us when we're hungry, whether it's spiritual food or physical food, to do what you do best. Meet our needs. Thank you for being a great God, a good God, a righteous God. And help us to leave here differently than when we came in, a little bit more knowledgeable to the things of God. And what changed more to the image of Christ like us trusting what you want to do. Thank you for your blessings upon us. Continue to help Brother Fred as he heals and uh, others that are out today. And Lord, help us to come back to our designed destination next week and help us to praise you throughout this week. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. Well, praise the Lord God is good to us all the time and all the time he's good. Pastor Mike's going to come and uh, give us uh, some uh, parting announcements. Amen. And uh, you make sure you listen up as he dismisses us in a word of prayer. Pastor White. Amen, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor, this morning for just a wonderful message. Amen. Amen. I don't know what you think about sometimes when you come in the house of the Lord. Don't you, don't you glad that God makes the message first Yes. Because yes. 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 that's what Pastor we need to hear this morning, Amen. how good God really is, even through all that we go through. We don't always understand why he does what he does, but I'm thankful that he's in control. Yeah. And he's good in all his ways. What a tremendous message this morning. I don't you I need to hear that. I praise God Amen. for it. Thank you, Lord, for being here this morning. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one of y'all. Pray for those that are listening online as well. Amen. Let's continue to pray and lift up Brother Fred and the halls as well. They weren't here this morning, but they are out for different reasons, but we know that they want to be here. Yep. Uh, they continue to uh, lift them up in prayer. I would ask that you all would to also pray for my supervisor. Uh, my supervisor had his appendix removed Ooh. on Friday. Ow. Very, very unexpected. Oh. Uh, we do want to lift him up in prayer. Amen. So God would work in a mighty way to see him get healed up here in the days to come really healed. soon. And I'm sure you would appreciate our prayers this morning. Amen. Amen. If you haven't already given your tithes and offerings, please do that as well. God is faithful. Let's be faithful to him in our giving. Uh, there's a tray there in the back with envelopes. You want to do that in the tray up here. As we go out, it's going to be warm this week. Make sure you drink plenty of water, stay hydrated. Uh, and uh, we look forward to being back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, we praise the Lord again for just this wonderful message this morning. But let's bow in prayer and ask God's blessings as we depart here this morning. Father, thank you again for your blessings, God. We thank you for the privilege that we have this morning, first of all, to come to before you in prayer and just to praise you and thank you for being such a wonderful God in all your ways. And, Lord, you're never wrong with what you do and the way that you do and all the things you allow to come and happen 
in our lives, you have your reason for it. And help us this morning, Lord, to grab a hold of this message, Lord, and it not fall on deaf ears. It might be something that help us throughout the days to come, and especially this week with all that is before us. We do pray for the Fred to continue to recover as well. Thank you for the halls bringing them back safely. We do pray for my uh, boss, uh, Leon Stallworth. We do pray for him this morning, Lord, that your healing hands uh, be upon him, that he heal them from having uh, the surgery he had on, for, on Friday. I pray you bless that work in a mighty way. Again, we thank you for each one that's here this morning, Lord. I pray uh, that uh, you met that need that they had this morning. And again, if you any here this morning or online that do not know Christ the Savior, God, I pray that you not let the sun go down upon this day before they make the decision for you before it's eternally too late. We love you, praise you, and thank you for the privilege you have to be in your house this morning. Bless now, I pray, as we depart, bring us back again at the appointed time. And we'll be careful this morning to thank you and praise you for all that you do and what you're going to do. We ask these things in our Jesus' name for his sake.